Charles Barkley just recently did an interview on Club Shay Shay, which is beginning a lot of attention um, overall. I wanted to break down this video. He's actually talking about his own trauma and how that's impacted him as a basketball player and how that actually flourished into his whole career. I want to break this down from a licensed therapist perspective to give you guys some insight on why and how it can be impactful for somebody to hold something on for so long. So you guys sit back, relax, and we're going to talk about it right now. All right, so let's get straight into it. But, you know, I made peace with my dad later in life. Mm -hmm. And because uh, he died a couple years ago, but we became casual friends. I didn't need a dad by the time we reconnected. But I buried the hatchet because, you know, you can't go through life being angry because right. it just weighs you down. Yes. Uh That's a fact. Like, you think about anger, you think about frustration, you think about resentment. Resentment, that big R word, man. That big R word is real. So... You know, it seems like as of right now, um, starting off the video and the, the interview, it seems as if Charles Barkley, you know, if you guys have or have not heard, didn't really know his pops, didn't really know who he was as a person until later in life, as he said. But I want you guys to hear what he's going to say next around how did he actually reconcile with his father and, you know, what traumas his father actually caused him that he needed to try to heal from. Uh, but I was so fortunate to have a great mother and grandmother. The forgiveness that you gave him, that was for you. Because yes. he was living his life. Yes. You was carrying around something yeah. that was weighing you down. Break this down real quick before we go any further. When you got when we talk about forgiveness, a lot of times the forgiveness is not for you, for the other person. And I say this pretty frequently. It's not for the other person, it's for you. You think about forgiveness, it is for you. It's not for the other person to hold on because the other person may not really even care you know, about what's going on in your life. They, they probably don't even remember or even really know what they actually did to you. You feel what I'm saying? So, like, it's important, you know, we do talk about forgiveness. It is for you, not for anybody else. Well, you know, Shannon, that was a, very, a, a really traumatic experience in my life when I was in high school. Okay. So, when I got ready, so when um, one of... It's a couple goals in my basketball career I'm really proud of. Okay. Number one, getting my team to the state tournament my high school had never been to the state tournament and then getting Auburn to March Madness those are two of the most important things I've ever done in my life okay. but to get back to the high school thing my junior year we got beat by a better team okay my senior year we were the best team in the state but I kind of got hurt I got hurt and we lost and I kind of was just so depressed. I kind of stayed in bed for like two weeks. <laughs> I mean, I was so mad. Like, the first year to get them to the tournament was a big deal because they had never been before. The next year, like, I want to bring the first state championship to my high school. And then we lost. I just went into a deep depression. So I got behind in all my classes, and I called them in every one of myself Spanish. First of all, I have no reason. So it sounded like he got into a deep depression after trying to win a state championship, and he actually, you know, wasn't able to do it. And I think this is a lot of times, you know, just kind of breaking this down a bit. Look, we don't talk about athletes and mental health a lot of times. Sometimes we think about mental health and athletes after the fact, you know, when they go into like deep depressions because, you know, Charles Barkley, you know, shout out to him for, for everything he's contributed to the game. Um, but it's a lot of stuff that it seems like he carried on to him, like that responsibility to like win, that responsibility to do well, you know, and something that happened and, you know, it's even happened to me, you know, when I was in high school is the injury that, you know, you can't control injuries, right? They happen, but they are so very devastating. Injuries are very devastating because when, you know, when you have an injury, you're not able to, you know, perform. You're not able to, you know, go out there with your team. You're not able to contribute. So many times, you know, you may be put in this position or you may have these feelings of like worthlessness, you know, when it comes down to it. And it seems like Charles Barkley during that time, he had that feeling of worthlessness and he, you know, and he was saying he went into a depression after that, which is real. You know, a lot of times folks may not be like, you know, why are you depressed about it's just a game or blah, blah, blah. But when you surround your identity around something, it could be anything and you lose that and you're not able to do that thing it will cause a, a huge depression. You know, depression is real. 
So I'm pretty sure, you know, back in his day, you know, for somebody to say that they were depressed, it wasn't like, you know, now today in 2024, it's like, okay, well, we got therapy and you know, what do you need? And all this other stuff. I'm pretty sure, you know, he, he may get into or may not. I'm pretty sure like it, it wasn't, it wasn't so graceful. You know what I mean? That's why he had to, you know, kind of suffer in silence because there probably wasn't any support, but let's get back into the video. Well, I was taking Spanish in Alabama. <laughs> So I caught up in all my classes of Spanish, so I didn't graduate. I had to go to summer school. Mm. Oh, man. And my dad, who was living in California my whole childhood, flew in, and he ripped me a new hole. And I'm already traumatized that I'm not going to get to March. Mm. And when he flew in, at that point, I just, hey, man, I ain't never going to forgive this dude ever again for yelling at me like that, because I was already down. So how often? So it sounded like his, his pops, you know, kind of kicked him while he was down, which you know, may not be so surprised, especially, you know, if his pops wasn't really around, you know, but it's, it doesn't help to be kicked while you're down for sure at all. Prior to him flying in to, to ream you for yeah. failing that class, how often had you seen him? How active was he in your life? Zero. So <laughs> that was the that was like, he just came in just for that? Yeah. Came in just to, that, that's a good question. He just came in just to like curse you out or did whatever he did. Yeah. And wow. I had, and I, 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 wow. I it's, my memory is vaguely, but I don't think I probably saw him probably 10 times in my childhood. But mm. he flew in for that high school reunion. And I didn't know I had, couldn't, uh, that I had flunked the final exam until right before graduation. And mm. he ripped me a new one. But that night, I went to the high school and I stood next door on the stadium and watched the graduation and cried for like wow. two hours. And that night, I said, this is the last time I'm gonna let anybody ever have control of my life. I mean, I was crying, it was brutal. Of course. And mm. I was standing there just watching all my friends graduate and some of the people, let's be honest, they wasn't that nice to me. They were calling me dummy and things like that. Right. So I was obviously- Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure them kids was harsh. I'm pretty sure them kids was on Charles's head about not graduating, 100%. See, I was kind of out of, out of it. Then I went to summer school, and then from that point on, I got my act together. But the biggest problem was, my first few years in the NBA, I was such an asshole because I was I was I, I was playing so angry because mm. I was thinking about two people, Miss Gomez yeah. and my dad. Miss Gomez, I'm assuming is a Spanish teacher. Yes. <laughs> so if you guys didn't pick up on, on what he just said, you know, he was so angry at those two people that it carried into him as an adult. What happened in high school, you know, now he's playing the NBA, all that anger and all that resentment sounds like it really put a number on him. And, you know, people said, man, why you play so angry and so aggressive? And I never told anybody until later. I said, man, I was, every time I stepped on the court, I said, I'm gonna stick it to Ms. Gomez and my mm. dad. Right. Mm, Ms. Gomez and, that this is interesting because I don't think we really take it to context of like, you know, traumatic events and how that shows up for us a lot of times. And I'm glad, you know, Charles Barkley is really open about this because, you know, you could be mad at somebody, right? Like you can have, let's, let's say, for example, um, ladies out there, like you may have an issue with your father or fellas, you may have grown up issues with your mother, you know, many times you're not going to actually be showing the projection of that trauma towards that individual that hurt you, you're going to project that anger or that resentment towards people that resemble, you know, those people, you know, even in his case, you know, it seems as if, you know, he just had that resentment and anytime he can get it off was on the court. You know, if you guys seen Charles Barkley play, like he, you know, he was one of those ones that, you know, you can consider him a dirty player. You can consider him an aggressive player. Like, you know, in this day and age, I'm pretty sure Charles Barkley played. He he wouldn't, you know, he probably would have been teched out the teched out of his contract. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So think about that in that context of, you know, you may think, oh, well, why he why did he pray so angry? Why did you know he should just let it go? It's hard to let go if you ain't really processed it first and foremost. And just as the example I gave earlier, you know, if you had mom issues or dad issues, you may not have, you know, show it towards your mom or your dad, but you may show it to other men and women in your life that may resemble 
those people or remind you of those people. You know, but it sounded like Charles Barkley, he made himself a promise. He was like, nah, we not, we not doing that. We are not allowing anybody else to do or put a number on him. Again, that's the promise he gave himself. And he projected that self, that self and that promise towards other people on the court. And it wasn't until the spitting incident in New Jersey, when I was sitting in the hotel room crying that night, I said, yo, man, you an asshole. Don't play basketball to try to stick it to people, the kids who made fun of you in high school, Miss Gomez. First of all, it was your fault you punked Spanish. It wasn't Miss Gomez's fault. Mm -hmm. it was Let's take responsibility. Let's take some responsibility with this, right? So it sounds as if, you know, years later, we have to, you know, it sounds like he just thought about it and it's like, hey, look, whose fault really was it that I didn't pass? A lot of times we don't want to take responsibility for things and we want to self blame. And then we want to also turn it into like, okay, well, this person hurt me. And it's like, well, did that person hurt you or was they holding you accountable to something that you were supposed to be doing, right? Were they holding you accountable to your work? So this is actually, you know, part of a healing process as well too, is, you know, taking, taking and accepting responsibility for what, what you it's your fault did. you flunk Spanish. Hey, listen, your dad's an asshole. That's on him. Right. Play basketball because number one, you're good at it. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 just just play just play, and, and that was like the turning point in my life. Mm. I appreciate y'all for tapping in. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope this was helpful and just in the context. I know, you know, Charles Barkley he's sharing his experience, but a lot of times we can learn from other people's experiences and we can see other people's experiences. We can see a lot of ourselves in other people, you know. So I hope this was helpful and just understanding like you have to let things go you have you can't hold in things all the time especially when it comes to traumatic events or things that's you know people has done to you right forgiveness is a big thing you know and it works not in all areas of P uh, ptsd or all areas of trauma just a full disclaimer but it can be helpful in letting go of resentment thank you guys for tapping in make sure you guys like share, subscribe, all do all that fun stuff to keep this algorithm going. I appreciate y'all for tapping in. My name is Terrence Stewart. Y'all take care. Peace.